I'm Brandon with Node. I'm going to take you on a tour of the 365 dashboard. So we have here a 365 business premium trial uh, and in here we're looking at the main dashboard, the admin panel of the product. If we click up here in this little grid we can always get to our admin if we are an admin. So wherever we are in 365 and we log into the system we can we, we may have to click on this grid to get to this or uh, we might go straight here depending on how we log in. Now just to quickly take you through, step you through what we have here, there's a menu on the left and we're just going to step through it. The setup menu would be a process that we want to run the first time that we install 365 for ourselves or establish our trial. The, um, the users are going to provide us with a list of users which we have for organization and we can create new users here real quickly by clicking the plus sign and then filling out the necessary form. You'll notice here this little drop down box where the username is might have uh, a, this domain this on Microsoft.com domain. Later I'm going to add a domain name to this account and then this would actually by default or uh, by my choice let me update it to the right domain name. It, it can auto generate a password make them change the thing the next time they sign in and it can also email the password to some other place you want it to go so that way if you want to collect those credentials you can now uh, the company profile contains like address information and stuff there's the contacts which which is part of just your global address book and that's just part of like if you want to know uh, if you want to have certain addresses that that are embedded into your company global address book the contacts would be where where those get get stored the shared mailboxes can actually enable you to have like these free mailboxes which you bind to multiple users so you might have multiple users here and in several different shared mailboxes that might be departmental or some kind of transactional function or something and those get bound into these different users so that they see that mailbox in their Outlook client. Then there's meeting rooms like um, these are considered resources and groups. Now the groups I think it's important to note that in here we actually have to go under setup distribution lists and other exchange groups to, to set up the distribution groups. So I've already added a distribution group called sales there but if we click here and we let this thing open up. This is the Exchange Admin Center, which is a whole separate part of 365. And this is really as if you had your own Exchange server and we're logging into the, that Exchange server's administrative uh, component. So it's kind of a full blown Exchange uh, setup here. So here we have groups and, and we have this distribution group. We can create new ones. We can uh, add people to be members of this group and we can do all the things we would do if we needed to configure exchange so there's a lot to that but uh, just going going back to, to where we were the you know I, I, our domains are something we have to go through and set up so there's a process which we begin we click start setup here and then it takes us through a wizard it provides us with a DNS record we have to add and that's the first step that validates that okay sure we do own this domain and then it lets us continue on it gives us a list of DNS records we have to update in our domain DNS so if you don't know how to do that then usually you would contact your domain registrar in most cases you know network solutions or something like that and you could say hey I need to update some things inside of my DNS how do I do it and tell them what you need to do. Um, the the rest of this thing is, I mean, is pretty robust and complete. There's your billing uh, management here. There is some like external things that we can share, such as like calendars, for example. One of my, we might want to publish to some URL. Um, there is the uh, some service health ish things that we can get there's support we can actually ticket Microsoft and and say hey Microsoft we have this issue or this thing is happening or something's going on or I don't know how to do this and 
uh, they'll actually help us with that. So that's a really, I think that's super powerful. You used to have to pay Microsoft a considerable amount of money to be able to ticket them for anything. Now we can just come in here and create a service request and it's included in the price of the monthly subscription. So that's, you know, a consideration to make when you think about the cost of this thing. The, uh, the, the rest of it is, is really our, our admin portals for the different components, the exchange that we were just in, a Skype for business, a SharePoint uh, management thing here. So, you know, we can set up SharePoint for our Office 365 implementation and get access to this full Share, SharePoint system and configure it. This is great because, you know, that used to be a whole entire another rather expensive server and a great deal of configuration to get. So it's important to note too that we can click that grid and get into Outlook by clicking Mail. So this is our online version of Outlook. And this, this is what would mirror our mobile device or our Exchange uh, or our, uh, our Outlook uh, client on our computer. Now, of course, if we wanted to install the full-blown Outlook software, then all we'd really have to do is just go up to this Office 365 Home and click, click Install Now on the software here, and it would download and install the Office 2016 full-blown suite. Then we would just start the Outlook software, and we'd log in with our username and password that we got into 365 to begin with, or, or were set up as that user. Um, so that's complete full-blown exchange server stuff. Now, we can also do Word Online as well. So, you know, while it does let us have the full software on our computer, on our Apple computer or Microsoft computer, we can get to that online as well. And it will create the uh, the document and and it'll actually you know let us collaborate and edit this thing with other with other people in our organization and on our 365 account and we can um, we can do that uh, and share this document as well with other people too so you know I mean the fact that we have an online version of, of Word online version of Excel online PowerPoint and then full-blown Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook installed on our computer that we can get. And the fact that we've got uh, SharePoint and OneDrive here, and then uh, you know just the, the the complete the complete system. Sway is a really new cool tool. Back to the admin portal though. You know, I want to point out that there are mobile apps across the board for this stuff too. So Microsoft has done a great job of doing really strong mobile apps. So we have an admin app, which is fantastic. It lets us edit the users, see the, the service health. Uh, it lets us do a lot of things we need to do. And it's available as a, as a downloadable app. So I highly recommend you go do that first. And there's also the Office 365 app that lets us get access to our, our files and documents. There's a um, Word and Excel apps, of course, but the the overall uh, complete nature of this product is just unprecedented, and the fact that it's now available as a subscription model is amazing. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to have some additional tutorials for more specific subjects, but this is just a an overview of how to kind of go through the 365 platform. I'm Brandon with Node, and I hope you enjoy being productive with 365.